Hey pilots, welcome back to Motion RC. Today we have the newest update from Freewing. This is the version two twin 64 millimeter uh, A10 from here at Motion RC. Available now and in stock. Uh, new paint job, lots of fun upgrades to it. Uh, I want to show it to you and today we're going to get it out of the box. We're going to start taking a look at it. We're going to get it assembled and go over all of those new updates and changes. So. Without further ado, let's get this thing out of the box. So step one in our assembly process is going to be getting this little tail section assembled. As you can see, the uh, servos are not in the rudders yet because they are installed into the rudder themselves. So we need to actually mount those on there and glue them. So we're going to take this right here, unfurl our little servo leads. Now. There is a channel right here in the bottom of this elevator half. What we need to do is take our little wire. We're going to test all this first, fit it all in there. And we're going to make that little wire go down our channel like so. Now we're not going to glue it yet until we get the elevator halves put on. But when we get done, you can see now how I'm running that wire in that little trough and down in there. It's always better to test fit everything before we get the glue out. We need to put our little elevator servo lead up through to the top. Now that we've done that, Get it all sorted out, make it look nice. Like so. Now, at this point, we're gonna take our white tube glue. Looks like this right here. It's a gigantic tube. Now I've already got a bunch of these open, so I'm gonna go get one of my already open ones. No reason to open that big new one. Now we can take our elevator half, now that we've got everything figured out, and squirt us some glue in here. Put a little around the outside, both sides. We don't want to be chinchy with this. We need to make sure we get enough glue that that's going to hold in there really good. I've got it squirting out of everywhere, which is okay for now because we're going to take our little finger and just clean that off. Now that we have that where we want it, let's see if we can still pick it up. Nope, it's already set off, that's okay. Sometimes I like to pick it up and take this out a few times, just like that, there we go. Let that air get to the glue and stick her in there one last time. And that ought to be good and stuck now, like so. Now we need to do the same thing for the other side of the aircraft. And we need to also, at this point, Make sure both, both of our rudders are nice and straight. It's going to look really goofy if you don't get these glued on here straight. Plane will probably still fly fine. It'll just look really silly if you don't get them straight. Now, at this point, what I'm going to do, and this is optional, but I do prefer to do it, is I'm going to glue the wires into the channels themselves by just taking a couple drops of thin CA and putting them right there on top of that. So here we go, a little bit of thin CA 
We're just gonna drip that right there on top of that wire just to hold it in. Don't have to go crazy with this by any means. Just enough to keep that wire from unseating later on. So now that we have our rudders installed, we need to set this piece aside for a few minutes and just let it dry. So we can continue with the assembly. Let's just set our rudders off to the side for now. All right, so for the next step in the process, what we're gonna go on and do while our rudders are drying, we're gonna get the motors installed. You can see that you have two pairs of wires back here that are actually taped together to keep you two separate ESCs. They're also color coordinated, so you have yellow, red, and black. What we need to do is just plug all of them into their corresponding colors on our engine nacelle. Doesn't matter which side you plug into which wires as long as you keep them to the matched sets. little tight nothing undoable though all right now that we have all our wires installed we need to take these guide them in to the little section here of the uh, fuselage where they're gonna go make sure you tuck everything in nice to the channel and seat it down in there all right at this point, we have the engine nacelles plugged in. We've got them all fitting. Now we need to take our screws from the top and install them in the aircraft. Oop, that screwdriver don't fit in there. All right, now that we have our engine nacelles on, it's time to flip the model over and we need to get our elevator installed. I've had it setting off to the side for a little bit. This is all dried up now. We can reach inside the model now and unclip our two servo leads for our elevators. Excuse me, for our rudders. Our elevators are actually handled by this servo up here going to these two ball link clevises. So let's bring the rudder over and let's plug it in. Yellow to yellow, brown to brown. Push them in until you feel the click of the little connectors. These have the servo protectors built in to keep them from ever unplugging in the fuselage. We can take those, push them up inside. What I'm gonna do is hang the aircraft off the side of the table. And reach in with my fingers, push the wires down good, whilst we make this corner. Just like that. Now we can take two more of our screws and get them installed into the tail to hold it on. Now, in order to install our elevators, you can see we have this connection right here. We need to loosen that off and pull our elevator halves out. We can go on and pull them out and connect them for now. But we're gonna leave this loose for the time being. What I need to do now is flip the aircraft over and install a receiver. We're gonna power the model up, center the servos, and then we will tighten this up before putting the wing on. Otherwise, we're gonna end up having to take the wing back off if we don't do this first. So this is the perfect time. Grab whatever type of receiver you choose to use in your model, put it into it, and fire it up on a new fresh model. 
then we're gonna meet back in just a second with mine going the same way. All right, guys, so what I did is I went on ahead and installed my uh, Lemon RX. You can get these available here at Motion RC. This is the 10 channel. I wanted to make sure I had enough to get reverse thrust. And it's nice because this has the gyro built into it. You can get these right off of the website though. Uh, so what I have right now is you can see my rudders are active. My elevator is also active right now, but we left it loose until we had it bound up. Now we know that our elevator servo should be completely centered. And it is, it's sticking straight out at a 90 degree angle. We have both of them connected at this point. So now we can set our elevator neutral position, make sure they're nice and even, and take and lock down that connector now. Like I said, the reason we did it now is so we don't have to open the wing back up later. It was easier to just go on ahead, install our receiver, power up the model and do that. And now our elevators should be connected. And they are. It's going the wrong way, but we can fix that later. The big thing right now is that we just wanted to center it before installing the wing. Uh, so at this point, let's go on ahead and get that wing installation completed. All right, so at this point, we need to get our wing put together. The aircraft comes with a whole bunch of these guys. As you can see, they are Y splitters. You have two that are twos and you have one that are three. So now we need to just plug everything in. So on the wing, two of your two splitters is gonna be for the aileron. So let's put aileron in first. all the way down until it clicks in. And then the other side into the other aileron port. Make sure to color match everything or it's not gonna work until it snaps. Still hasn't quite done it, there it is. All right, so there's that one. The three wire connector is gonna go uh, landing gear. then landing gear. And then the third one is gonna go up to the nose of the aircraft where the third landing gear is. And then for our last two, we're gonna plug in flaps and flaps. All the way until it clips in. all the way in until it clips all the way in. There we go. Now we can take all that spaghetti and get ready to cook some rigetti. Let's set the fuselage just like that out on the table. And here comes the only hard part of the whole assembly. We need to take all these wires and get them up to the nose of the aircraft. So this does not come in the A-10 kit, but it does come in a lot of our other models. Uh, all it is is a wire with a loop on the end. Uh, a lot of guys call these the gum get them wire. Uh, if you don't have one, take a clothes hanger, straighten it out, put a loop on the end of it, and you'll have one of these wires. I'm gonna take this and put it towards the back of the aircraft to make my life a lot easier. Now you can see that's poking up right here. Then we can take our spaghetti and hook that in on our come get em wire. Now we find our little wire and we feed everything in as nicely as possible now. There we go, make it past and feed the wires in. Now as we feed, we can set the wing down onto the model, just like that, as easy as it can be done. Now we need to make sure everything lines up and key it down 
ever so slightly until we get that all the way down. Making sure as to not pinch any wires as we put this together. Take your time with this part. We need that wing to seat all the way and to not be pinched in any way on a wire. Now we have our spaghetti rigetti up front. We just unclip the come get them wire and we're off to the races again. Now, while we have the bottle upside down, let's go on and grab our remaining screws and get those four into the aircraft. Now, be careful pushing on these that you're not pushing on your fresh glue jean, joints, excuse me, jeans. So I'm gonna hold the aircraft while I screw these in. There we go. Now our wing is installed. So the next thing we need to do is go on and get all of our spaghetti nest up here in the front taken care of. Now that one three wire connector that we brought up is going to connect to the landing gear. So let's go on and get that connected. Then the landing gear is gonna go into your receiver. Let's see, landing gear is channel five. Perfect. Now, I should have labeled these before I put them through the wing, but I did not. The good news is we sell these things here called a servo tester. It's as simple as powering it up. Let me go grab a, a battery. All right, got me a battery. Just need to power it with a 2S LiPo. There we go. We're going to tell it if they're analog or digital servos. We're going to put it in linear and normal mode. Now we can plug this guy in right here. And that should be flaps, I think. Let me take a look. Yep. And we can wiggle them. That tells us this is the flaps. So this is going to go into channel six. Let's take it and put it into channel six. And then our remaining one is gonna be ailerons. We're gonna put that into channel two. Now then, we're gonna to wanna to make this nicer here in a minute. But for now, I'm gonna just stick us the receiver down in here for now. Move all the spaghetti to one side. Like I said, we're gonna to wanna to clean this up though. You don't wanna leave a ton of wires everywhere. Clean install will be a happy install. Happy little planes, happy, happy little planes. All right, let me slide the battery in because we're gonna probably want that. so that now we can test everything on the model. So, let's plug in again. Turn the transmitter on. Make sure our hands are clear. We can check the uh, landing gear. Uh-oh. Plug them in the wrong channel. Six. Uh-oh. Oh, I plugged them in upside down. That'll do it every time. So, landing gear, I see I plugged them in upside down. It's very easy to do. So if something doesn't work, always check your receiver connection first. 
All right, let's plug them in again. Pick the aircraft up. Now let's try the landing gear. All right, they armed. And there we have it, we have our landing gear. Very nice looking, a little cladding on it. I like it, scaled out details. Very good looking. All right, now let's check our throttles. Working good. Let's go on and do a throttle calibration before we go any further. To do one, take your transmitter, full throttle. Full throttle, stay up there. Plug the model in, hold it, listen for two beeps. Down to zero. There we go. Now our throttles have been calibrated. Before we go any further, let's do a throttle cut. Put a throttle cut on. So now my throttle is disabled. I like mine the other way around though. So I'm gonna do here and here. Throttle is cut. Throttle is active. So there's that. Now we can go on and check our control surfaces too. So our elevator is backwards. So let's go on and fix that real quick. Servo setup. Reverse, I'm gonna reverse my elevator channel. Rudder, that's correct. We haven't hooked up our ailerons yet. Now, that's what we're gonna do next. So, now that we have the model powered on, we also know all of our servos sh should be centered. I'm gonna set it upside down so that we can get to it. Oh, the ailerons are plugged in. So I should have checked this. I'll check them when we flip it back over because we're going to install our flaps right now. So we need to go into our flap setup. I'm going to go on and adjust my flaps on the position that I want them. So in this case, I have them set up on this switch. I'm going to put it at positive 100 for full flaps up. You can see the actual uh, connector turn. So I'm going to use the outermost handle give myself as much travel as possible. Now we need to make sure our flap segment, first off, let's snap it and just get it loose. Perfect. Now we need to unloosen this or tighten it, depending on where yours comes out, to where that sets neutral with our ailerons. So in my case, I'm gonna spin it out. right there and I'm gonna go out just a hair bit more one more turn perfect click that on I'm gonna also give myself a two-second deployment nice now we just need to do the same on the other side Snap that guy in, and now let's test our flaps. One notch, two notches, perfect. While we have the aircraft upside down, let's go in and check our gear too. Looks good. Control surface check, everything is working now. All right, now let's go over and make sure we're still all going the right direction. So, aileron is backwards. So if I go to the left, the left aileron should be going up right now, and it is not. So we're gonna go into our uh, servo setup and reverse our ailerons. So now they're the correct direction, correct direction, correct direction, correct direction, correct and correct. Perfect, that's what we wanted. All right, so at this point, it's time for us to go on and set up our dual rates and expo. We now have everything as it needs to be on the model, working and operating. Uh, what I have here is the Benchcraft throw gauge. If you'd like to pick one of these up, they are available here at Motion RC. So for my ailerons, I have 
just right at 25 millimeters for my high, 22 for my mid, and 20 for my low. Now the book rate does call for 18, but I always like my aircraft a little more sensitive than what the book calls, but you can also make that 18 millimeters for your low. For my elevator, I have right at 16 millimeters for my high, 10 millimeters for my mid, and eight millimeters for my low. I also have 20% expo all around on this setting. For my rudders, I actually have 100% travel with no rates, but I have 30% expo just to soften the center. I usually really like a lot of rudder travel when I'm on the ground to help steer that aircraft. Now for my flap deflection, I have 10 millimeters for takeoff, and 22 millimeters for my full flap deflection. There you are. Now, for both of my flap settings, I have 10% down elevator mix mixed in for my maiden flight. So at this point, your model is pretty much set up, but it's time to start installing all the ordnance if you choose to use it. Uh, all the ordnance on the aircraft is going to just glue in. You can see all the spots for it on the aircraft, uh, as well as all the antennas and things. So I'm gonna go around the model and start installing these. Uh, we'll get Lori to speed this up for a second because I'm gonna just go on a glue-in spree here. But here we go, let me get all this stuff put on. All right, I have all the bottom section done now. I need to let everything dry for a little bit, then we can flip it over and put the stuff on the top of the aircraft. So I'm gonna give this a little bit to dry and then we'll flip it over. All right, pilots, so we glued all the ordnance on the bottom half of the aircraft. I flipped it over and I have also added in the antennas here, here, and here to the top of the aircraft. And that gets all of our little bits and bobs installed on. Uh, at this point, the aircraft is all assembled and ready to go. I cannot wait to get this one out and fly it because all A-10s fly good. And uh, a little smaller one will be a lot of fun. Uh, I've flown the big one quite a bit. And uh, now with the little bit smaller one, it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, it's nice to see this model come back. I know a lot of customers really wanted to see it. And uh, here it is. It is in stock now and ready to ship to you if you want to get one. So. Without further ado, whether it's land, sea, or air, Motion RC has everything you want, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.